Emuna is in your mind. Yes, I believe HaKadosh Baruch was running the world. Bitachon, it became part of you. It's your instinct. It's bringing the Emuna into practicality. It's not just having it in your mind. Wherever you get your podcasts from, or our own website, prismoftorah.com. This is the Prism of Torah with Rabbi Saf Aaron Prisman. This week, Pasha's Fa'ira. Don't just live Emuna, live Bitachon. Shalom of Racha. I want to share with you a Mordeke Yesoid that Rabbi Eliyahu Lapian in his Sefer Lev Eliyahu brings down that screams out and answers several questions in this parsha. I changed a little bit from the way he said it because I connected to my way a bit more. And I want to share with you this concept is very critical in our lives. And we'll start off with already from the previous parsha on Parashas Shmois. We see that Kodesh Buchu presents himself to Moshe Rabbeinu and he asks him, please come and save my nation. So Moshe Rabbeinu tells him, they're not going to believe me. HaKadosh Buchu gives him three signs and he says, they'll believe you. Don't say Lashon Hara on my nation, they'll believe you. And indeed, Moshe Rabbeinu goes there, tells them, I'm going to be your shaliach to save you from this galus. And indeed, they believe him. They believed him. That's scene number two already, we'll say. Scene number three, Moshe and Aaron continue. They go to Paro and they tell him that they're requesting to let the, let my people go. And the Yalko Shimoni brings down these awesome, unbelievable miracles that happen as they go into the palace because it's brought down in the Yalko Shimoni that there were 400 openings to get into the palace of Paro. Every opening, every doorway had lions and bears and no one could get in there unless you fed the meat. But when Moshe and Aaron came, they all came, all the animals, the bears and the, and the lions, they came to their feet and they, they walked them into the palace and then they got to Paro and at that exact date, all the kings from from west and from the east came there because it was the the day of the birthday of Paro. And when Moshe and Aaron arrived, they looked like angels, and they were very tall, and their eyes looked like literally the sun. They come back to the nation, and as a result of them going to Paro, Paro, as we know, made the laws even more draconian, more difficult, as he forced them to find their own raw materials to continue building. And when Bnei Israel saw Moshe and Aaron, and they said, Moshe and Aaron said, don't worry, we're going to save you now. As it says in the Pasuk, they couldn't listen to them anymore. Which literally means from their shortness of breath and from the difficult work, work, they couldn't even listen to them. And there's several questions here that we're going to try to answer. Question number one, if HaKadosh Buhu really wanted Moshe Rabbeinu to be able to convince the nation, right now Hashem's going to bring the redemption, he's going to, wouldn't it make more sense that he would go first to Paro, have all these miracles happen, everyone would hear about these awesome, unbelievable miracles with the lions and, and bears and all that, and only afterwards he should go to Bnei Yisrael and tell them, listen, do you believe me? I'm going to take care of you. Why was the order the opposite? First, he gave these three little signs to Bnei Israel, and they believed him, Baruch Hashem, and only then he went to Paro. Why was the order not reversed? That's question number one. Question number two is a very famous question. The Midrash Rabbah, Berish Yisrabah, says that there's a Kalva Choymer over here. This is one of the ten times you see a Kalva Choymer in the Torah. What is the Kalva Choymer? Moshe Rabbeinu told the Kaddish Buch, wait a second, wait a second, how do you expect me to continue and try to take your people out? Even Bnei Israel didn't believe, didn't listen to me. Listen, they're now telling me, oh, we couldn't even listen to you because they were shortness of breath and, and their difficult work. So Kalvachoymer, Pa was never going to give in. Of course Pa is not, never going to give in. And the question begs itself, that's a Kalvachoymer? That's not really logical. There's a pircha on this Kalvachoymer. How we know the continuation of the Pasuk tells you why Bnei Israel didn't listen to him. Because they were working so hard and their kotzeruach, the shortness of breath, because they were working so hard. So why is that a logical statement, Bichla? That's question number two. Question number three, it's very interesting. When Moshe and Aaron left, after Bnei Israel said, well, we believe you, then Moshe and Aaron went to Paro's palace. 
And you see in the Psukim that at the beginning they went with a lot of skeinim, a lot of elderly wisdom people that walked one towards the palace. But the Psukim and the literally speak out that when they got to the palace, and this is from last week's parasha, only Moshe and Aaron got there. So Rashi explains already over there, and the Midr says that all the skeinim along the way got scared and they ran away. One by one. At the end, when they got to the palace, it was only left, only the only Moshe and Aaron were left on their own. The question is, why? Why did the skinny, how did they become so scared? So we'll start, we'll go one by one. The first question we asked was, I don't understand. It makes more sense that Moshe and Aaron first should go to Paro in the palace, have all these awesome miracles and only then go to tell Bnei Saul, okay, look how many miracles happened to us. We're here, we're messengers of HaKadosh Buhu, we're going to be saving you. Why wasn't order reversed to be like that? And the answer is Ha Gufa. This is precisely the order it needed to happen. Because it's only thanks to the pure belief of Bnei Israel, with only these little, three little signs that Moshe showed them, like the staff turning into a snake. Only these signs and it's only this true emuna that Bnei Yisrael showed that it's through that merit they were saved. Hare, don't forget, they were Ovide Avoida Zawa as well. And it's only because of their true, innocent belief that Moshe and Aaron had the merit to have all these miracles in the palace. So it had to be in this order. Atkan, the first question we dealt with. Now let's move on. Actually, before we move on, this is actually a mefulish mechilta, a midrash in Parshas B'Shalach, that Rabbi Nechemia says, whoever takes upon him even one mitzvah, but with true emuna, belief in Hashem, he is worthy that Ruach HaKodesh will be bestowed upon him. And there's another midrash that says that the only reason HaKodesh Buchu actually did save Bnei Yisrael is bischus, in the merit of the fact they believed in Hashem. Moving on to the next question we asked, how can it be the Skenim, they were at the top of the top of Bnei Yisrael, how can it be that they got scared as they walked closer to the palace of Paul, which means their fear grew and they started getting scared. How can that be? And the answer is, it's a very critical concept that lies within the words, Ve'yadata ayom, as it says in Parashas Dvorim, Ve'yadata ayom, ve'ashevoisa el There's different level of beliefs. There's believing in your mind, in your sechel, in your moach, in your brain, which is really relatively easy. Because it's pretty obvious, you look at nature, you look at the infinite wisdom in the Torah, you realize there is a creator. But that's not enough. As we know, we have to bring and ensure that this idea, this emesdika idea, that HaKadosh Baruch is running the world and created us for a purpose, it should be part within us, in our emotions, in our hearts, in our blood, in our instincts. And we have to make it tangible. And that is exactly what the Pasuk means. You should know it in your mind, but you should also bring it into your heart that it's one with your emotions. It's not enough to have it in your mind. This is not an easy task to do. As Ravitzak Blazer Zatzal says, that just like there's a big distance between someone that doesn't know of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and someone that realized and came to this affirmation that HaKadosh Baruch Hu runs the world, there's even a bigger, a greater distance between someone that knows in his mind that HaKadosh Baruch is running the world as opposed to someone that brought it into his heart, into his emotions, into his blood and it became his instinct. That's also the difference in the definition between emuna and bitachon. It almost sounds the same, but it's totally different. Emuna is in your mind. Yes, I believe HaKadosh Baruch is running the world. Bitachon, it became part of you. It's your instinct. It's bringing the emuna into practicality. It's not just having it in your mind. The same too was the issue with the skenim. The skenim believed in their mind. But once you only believe in your mind, but not in your heart, then the second you're confronted with something that is emotionally driven, such which is nefesh, then that overrides. Because your nefesh, you don't have any ne- nefesh in your blood, in your emotions. You don't have the moon on such a high level. So the second you're confronted with some taiva, some, some urge to do an avera, then that overrides. Or fear, or, or whatever it is, that overrides. And that's what happened with the skinning. Each one was in a different level. But as they got closer to the palace of Paro, which was a very strong leader at the time, probably the strongest leader, 
Everyone was scared. Everyone got scared at a different point, except for Moshe Aaron, that reached this level of having a Muna, 100% level of Muna, or almost 100% in, in their minds, as well, in, in their emotions, in their hearts as well. And therefore, they continued the whole path till going into the palace, as opposed to the other skinny. This goes very nicely with another Midrash in the Mechilta. The Rabbi Yudah ben Beseira says, how can it be that they didn't listen to Moshe because they were shortness, had shortness of breath? Mikot Tzavuach. Fichi, is there such a thing as a person that someone tells him a good thing that's going to happen, you're going to be saved? Or a master telling his slave, I'm going to let you free, and he doesn't listen to him? What's going on? So why does it say they didn't listen to Moshe? Ela, because they were so, their instincts were still connected to doing Avoid Zohar, which was a big taiva, it was a big thing, a big Yetzirah in those days, as the Gemara in Sanhedrin says. And hence they weren't able to disconnect. In their mind, they realized that Shem's running the world. But they were so connected on an emotional level. In their blood, they were connected to the Voidah Zahra. It was difficult for them to leave it. Until, look over there in the Midrash, Vayetzavem el Bnei Yisrael, to leave Avoidah Zahra. With this concept, we can also answer why the Kalva Choymer is a Galva Choymer, a good Kalva Choymer. Because perhaps we can answer, Koytze Ruach, Bnei Yisrael didn't listen to Koytze Ruach. Koytze Ruach literally means a shortness of breath. But it could also mean Koytze is, is not enough of. Ruach. Ruach, we know, represents emotions. And their emotions were lacking emuna. They had emuna in their mind. That's why the first time they saw Moshe Rabbeinu, they said, yeah, of course we believe you. But the second Paul made the decrees more difficult. Then you, once you have a collision between the emotions and emuna in your emotions, they didn't have enough emuna in their emotions, and therefore it over and ha'gufa we see with Paro himself in Makat Barad, the hail that he says, "Please take this away from me. I sinned this time, and my nation is the are the wicked ones." And still, right after Hakadosh Baruch Hu ended the hail, Paro still said, "No, no, no, I'm not letting you go." That's koitzeruach. He didn't have the belief that Hashem is ruling the world in his emotions. It wasn't in his blood, it wasn't in his instincts. Yiratzon that will take from here this concept, how crucial it is to work on ourselves on a continuous basis to ensure that it doesn't just stay in our minds and as thoughts that our Kaddish Buhu is running the world and that everything is for the best, but it should be part of our blood, part of our instincts, part of our emotion, part of our heart. That's why we have Tfilin Shilroish, Keneged Hamoyach, our mind, and also tefillin shaliyad, we have to put on an angle, because it has to be a mamish facing the heart, because we have to be oivet Hashem with our minds and with our hearts. I just want to end with a short story, a fresh story that happened, I think, this year. There was an event for our shul, for the woman on Motzei Shabbos, last Motzei Shabbos, and they recorded this woman, unfortunately I don't know her name, from America, that she went to visit Niagara Falls, I think from the American side, but I don't think there's enough kamina. And against all odds, she slipped on a cliff and fell all the way into the, the, the Niagara Falls, the water over there. And I'm sure most of you have been there and it's extreme. I mean, it's against all odds that she'll be alive. She, and she found herself sitting in the water on rocks, only with a couple of scratches. And her instinct, instinct number one was, oh no, my hair is not covered. She saw her shaitel on the, on the water right next to her. She straight away put it on. I mean, that's a huge miracle. But the, but the amazing thing about this woman is that she realized straight away that her hair wasn't covered. But the Nakuda I want to bring up is that when they interviewed her, because they heard a recording of this woman, she wasn't here physically, they asked her, what was your first reaction? What did you think? So she said, straight away, I thought, I'm thankful to Hashem for everything I have, my family, and, and that I'm okay now. That was her initial thought. Straight away to think of Kaddish Bohu. So this person that interviewed her said, I don't understand. You told me at the beginning, you're just a regular lady. You don't really want to go talk about this. You're just a regular person. So this happened to you. But, but so how can it be that your first thought that came to your mind is thanking Hashem for everything you have and you're so appreciative. That's you, that was your first instinct. It's more normal than a, a person's first instinct is something else. Like, did I get scratched? Am I okay? That was your first instinct? So she said, I'll tell you the truth. 
I'm a doula in profession. My profession is to be a doula, help people give birth. And something happened that triggered my thoughts. And I realized, wow, I really have to work on myself. Maybe I have emuna in my mind, but I don't have bitachon enough. I have to live life that HaKadosh Buhu is running the world and is with me. It has to be in my blood, in my emotions, my instinct. And hence I worked on myself. I did exercises for many years. And maybe that's how I got to this, to this point where that was my initial thought. So you see that it's doable. A person has to work on this idea because that makes a world of a difference. As we said, the difference between someone knowing that Hashem runs the world and not knowing is even smaller than the difference of knowing that Hashem's running the world and is with you, but living it up and making sure it's part of your emotions. Have a good Shabbos. Thank you for joining us. This is the Prism of Torah. Visit our website, prismoftorah.com, where you'll find a full archive of hundreds of past every Torah. Subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, and don't forget to share with your friends and family. Sponsorship opportunities are available for all of our episodes. Thank you, Yonavefa, for your recording equipment. Produced by Ellie Podcast Productions.